now. Hello and welcome to episode 14 for our Let's Play of The Lord of the Rings. In the last episode, we just started exploring Moria and we explored the 7th, 6th, and the 5th depths. So now we will be on the 4th deep um, and we will start exploring that. Now this is the level where, um, or the deep where Glowen mentioned the uh, tower in the middle of the lake and we're uh, going to find that pretty shortly here. That's about the only thing of note uh, on this level. But uh, right now we just got attacked by uh, two orcs, which uh, should be child's play, quite frankly, at this point. And if you come over here to uh, this part of the wall, the funguses that grow on the wall are a deep red color. We found some red fungus, it looks like. So we'll take that and maybe uh, it'll tell us what that does. Well now, unless I am no judge of good foodstuffs, these fine bits of fungus are the same as the scarlet shelves that old farmer maggot used to grow. Fine eating they are. Nevertheless, the other members of your party seem less certain about your evaluation. Well, those uh, will heal you about three points, so uh, they can be useful, so we'll take them with us. From somewhere above, you hear a shrill voice cry, Gandalf, Gandalf. The water around the bridge begins to surge and boil. No, we have uh, more tentacles, it looks like. I wonder um, if this is, uh, if these tentacles belong to the same monster as attacked us outside. I don't know, maybe somehow the lakes are connected, you know, underground somehow, I don't know. Or maybe there are just a lot of these monsters around. But, um, since we dealt with the ones outside, we know how to deal with these ones in here. There goes one, and the other. And uh, we get attacked by two more, it seems, on the other side. I wonder how many of these things we'll have to deal with before we can just cross this bridge. But I guess this is the, uh, the lake that was mentioned, and so maybe the tower will be uh, on the other side of it. And uh, since we've taken some damage so far, uh, maybe that'll be a chance for us to test out our red fungus. Although Sam's uh, inventory is full, so he can't uh, take any food right now. So we'll have to trade something of his away. I can't remember who else got any damage either. Sam was one. Mary was one. He Gandalf already had some. Uh, Boromir got some, but uh, I think he'll hold up okay. Really, the damage uh, to the hobbits is are the big characters you want to be concerned about. And so we can start climbing the tower here in the middle of the lake. From somewhere above, you hear a shrill voice cry, Gandalf, Gandalf. And uh, we get attacked by an Olog high here. But thankfully, it's uh, only one. So we should make pretty short work of him. That is, if we're standing close enough. Well, we know that those um, brown birds that we found several of um, called for Gandalf, so maybe we'll find another one here. There's an opening in the ceiling. We'll just climb through it. There is a stone lid blocking your movement. It must be removed. There's an opening in the ceiling. Um, and we can use the pry bar to deal with that. You pry the lid open. Open, excuse me. And once again, there's an opening in the ceiling. <laughs> in case we didn't know by now. The troll who stands here is a giant, even amongst its own kind. Powerful muscles ripple beneath its scaled skin. In one massive hand, it clutches a small brown bird. Gandalf, Gandalf, the bird cries out. As the behemoth troll stuffs the bird into its filthy satchel and reaches for its massive war club, the bird seems to say, Gandalf, it's I, only to be cut off by the muffling leather. 
Twirling its club like a baton, the monster advances, gurgling in what it might consider a chuckle. Uh, so once again, we only have one Olog high to deal with. Um, no matter how big the description uh, made him out to be. He still seems to be the same as all the others. And we do have another one, uh, excuse me, another one of those brown birds here. Um, so I'm wondering at what point we're going to figure out the deal with them. The bird hovers near you. Owen and Ori's ghosts are on the fifth level of Moria, west of the Great Hall. Speak with them. I shall give you the power to free them. Beware Moria Doom, a spirit of malice with the power to enslave the dead. Only the Golden Wheel can take you to his stronghold beyond the Endless Maze. Now farewell, the bird flies away. It isn't until the... Excuse me. It isn't until later that you realize that it forgot to tell you its name. Uh, it just said there's a passage back down, so we can just climb down. And um, that's all we need to do in the tower here and um, in the fourth deep as well. And uh, it's worth noting that if you want to avoid the uh, fight with the tentacles altogether, you can cross uh, this eastern bridge over here instead of the southern one. Um, but anyways, so we'll take the passage up to the third deep now and uh, see what we can find up there. After we deal with these uh, two other orcs. And that passage is right over here. Gimli winces. We seem to have been ascending higher. Well, the important thing on this level is uh, this area. There's a magical barrier here that uh, you can't cross unless you have the lady tokens, both of them. And um, this is actually where we're going to, um, uh, once we do everything we need to do, we're going to come back here to get uh, Durant's axe. But there's a couple things we need to do before that, before the game will let us uh, take the axe. And we have two more orcs. Seem to be noticing a pattern. But actually, depending on... Uh, certain things if you alert some orcs around to uh, your presence these orcs uh the number may be different depending on that but we haven't alerted anybody yet so we only have two to deal with gimli winces we seem to have been ascended higher ascending higher so now we are on the second deep and we can find a little section over here you are teetering on the edge of certain death well we know what to do not climb, jump. We have a little uh, cavernous part back here. Doesn't seem to be as developed as um, the tunnels like the rest of Moria has been. We have another chasm. Let's hop right over that. And uh, we can find more red fungus here. Give some to Sam. And uh, I think Boromir's the other one that, uh, well, Gandalf will give him some. And uh, it's the same old passage about Farmer Maggot. Uh, I'm taking my best guess here since I don't know how long it's been for the day-night cycle. But, oh, good. All right, so Boromir got some. I think it's been a while for Gandalf. Uh, but definitely not Sam. I'm not going to use Sam's yet. Jump over this again, and we'll uh, continue our expo exploration of this cave area. Uh, there's nothing down in that part. And um, there's a later point in the game where basically you can trade an orca ring. And if you uh, want to get the ring back, you can come down here to uh, get it from him. We have uh, some snagas here, which are basically um, really the weakest version of orcs there are. You can see with the ease with, with, with which we're getting rid of them. We have a dwarf over here. A dwarf stands here, glaring menacing, menacingly at you as he hears you approach. Abruptly, he realizes that you are not orcs and introduces himself. I am Kiri, he states, an emissary from the Lonely Mountain to Rivendell. I and my friend Hain were taken captive and brought to Dol Guldur. I was brought to this place as part of my torment. Hmm. I am Kiri of the House of Durin. If you have come to take me from this place, you have my gratitude. 
Unfortunately, we don't have any um, free space in our party. Or we would do that. Oh, he doesn't know about Durin. Huh. Well, he certainly must know about Moria. Very little of its ancient beauty remains. We should not have tried to return here. Not yet. He said he had a captain or a companion. A rather feisty dwarf. They may slay him, but they will never break his will. He said he was in Dolgodur. Dolgodur is currently occupied by at least two Nazgul, and one of them may be the Witch King himself. Hmm. Well, it seems we didn't uh, quite get rid of the Nazgul at the fort after all. The orcs are not very vigilant. You managed to get by them. Uh, if we had come from uh, west to east, we would have had to sneak by them. But for some reason, going the other way, uh, you don't have to do that. Well, that kind of sucks for Kiri that our, our party is full, or we certainly would have taken him with us. So now we can uh, go up, and now we are on the first deep, or uh, the first level, whichever you'd like to call it. Within this maze of columns, you spot a sleeping Snaga. He turns over and stretches, but doesn't seem to have noticed you. Well, you could go up and kill him outright, but that's one of the um, things that will alert other people, other orcs to your presence. So if we sneak, you carefully surround the sleeping Snaga. Even if he should wake, he would be at your mercy. Do you wish to wake him? The Snaga awakes with a start. You are careful and do not allow him to scream. Eventually, he realizes that continued struggling will result in his death, so he decides to be more cooperative. You can actually uh, talk to him now. Garsh. The little orc snarls. Our master will not let you pass. You can't uh, question him about anything. Maybe we have something that will um, loosen his tongue a bit. Something shiny, maybe. You give him some of the uh, mithril, or you can use gems or rings, uh, I think. Garish is now prepared to cooperate with you. So maybe now he'll answer some questions. This place belongs to orcs now, no longer belong to stunted, bearded, ugly ones. He's not being very polite. Garish is now prepared to cooperate with you. That seems kind of a silly thing to display. It rises from the greatest deeps to destroy intruders, like Balin's dwarves. Stone, dwarves guard Balin's secrets. Will you let me go if I tell you Balin's password? Um, password is, um, bloody, um, axe. Yes, that's it, bloody axe. What, you not believe, Garsh? Somehow I don't. I don't think we're going to get too much out of him. And we could attack him again. But it seems he's just gone back to sleep. Uh, so I guess we'll leave him alone for the time being. And continue on in the first deep. I think this is the uh, the biggest um, level in Moria. There's actually a, kind of a bit we skipped of it um, from here to the entrance. That's actually the, um, the door where we have to use the... Uh, star-shaped key right there. But there wasn't anything of use uh, in that part, so uh, it's just as well. Carefully cross the bridge. The passageway widens into a dark chamber. At its center lies a great circular hole, with rusty chains dangling down into the darkness. Possibly this was used as some great well of old. Three arched passageways lead to the east. The leftmost arch descends deeper. The central arch leads on a level course, and the rightmost ascends to some higher place. Gandalf seems puzzled. I have no memory of this place at all. We must choose our path from here carefully. Pippin feels curiously attracted by the well. While the others busy themselves in the chamber, he creeps over to the edge of the well and peers over. A chill air seems to strike his face, rising from invisible depths. Moved by a sudden impulse, he gropes for a loose stone and lets it drop. His heart beats many times before there is any sound. Then, 
far below as if the stone had fallen into deep water in some cavernous place there came a plunk very distant but magnified and repeated in the hollow shaft gandalf growls out fool of a took this is serious not some hobbit walking party throw yourself in next time finally gandalf comes to a decision about the road ahead i do not like the feel of the middle way and i do not like the smell of the left hand way there's foul air down there or I am no guide. We should take the right-hand passage. Yeah, you'll get uh, trolls if you go the middle way. So uh, we will go the right-hand way, and we will ascend higher to the second level. But I think that'll be a good place for us to stop here, and um, we can continue to explore the higher levels of Moria in the next video.